keep up with Team USA with gig speeds over Wi-Fi from Xfinity. Can your internet do that? Restrictions apply. Not available in all areas. Requires gig internet and compatible gateway. Gig speed Wi-Fi is shareable across all devices. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. It's the Opinions Matter podcast with Adrian Kennedy and Jeremy Dixon. A podcast from Ireland with a difference. Yeah. Let us move on to something completely and utterly different. And this is something uh, that I know an awful lot of you have an opinion on. And it is something that has dominated conversation um, in the sporting world for the last, oh, maybe since... Uh, it's since the George Floyd thing, since the Black Lives Matter movement uh, Sorry, became actually, a thing last uh, year. Yeah, 2016, believe it or not. That's how long it's around, 2016. Taking an E? Yeah, yeah, 2016. Uh, and I'll give you the background to it in a, in a moment. Um, but you're right, Adrian. It's something that everybody has an opinion on. on and you don't even have to have a, a knowledge of sport or even be into sport to know that during most sporting events now, before the event uh, kicks off, the players will all take the knee. They will all get down on one knee. And this is a very um, divisive thing because there's people who believe that, yeah, it's great uh, that sports people are taking the knee. And then there's another cohort of people who believe that uh, this is completely uh, wrong. Now, we're going to hear from a guy in a moment who wants this discussed on the show and wants to know uh, how you feel about taking the knee. So we want to hear from you right now. When you're watching a football match with your favourite team playing, if it's Man United or Arsenal or whatever the case may be, or you're watching, you know, an American football game or a tennis match, it could be anything, and you see the, uh, the players taking the knee before the game kicks off, what do you make of it? What do you think? Do you say fair play to them? That's great. They're standing up against racism. Or do you go, no, I'm sorry. This kind of stuff has no place in, in sport. Now, by the way, this is a conversation that we probably couldn't have if we were working on a, a mainstream radio station because mm. you, you're not even allowed to question anything to do with the BLM movement or something like that. But lo and behold, we're not on a mainstream radio station, so we can debate this and we can talk about our honest opinions. And we want to hear your opinions right now. When you see uh, sports people taking the knee at a sporting event, what do you think? Do you think there's no place for that or there is? Now, Adrian, you were saying you thought it was only around a couple of years. Believe it or not, um, the taking the knee started in 2016. In in the States, yes, yes. at American football. I yes. remember that. Okay, so but Col- it's, Colin, it, Pack- Can- that's Col- Colin Pakernick um, took the knee during the national anthem because he said, I can't stand up during a national anthem for a country that doesn't uh, accept me as an equal person because I'm an African-American. Okay, um, but since then, and since the whole uh, George Floyd case last year, it's become more mainstream. Yep. Uh, you know, we don't watch American football uh, over here generally, uh, but it has become much more mainstream where it's happened at uh, UEFA 2020 a couple of weeks ago. It happens at premiership matches. Um, it doesn't have to happen at GAA matches, interestingly, but... Uh, well, you know, and all that's going to take... I was thinking about that. I was watching the Ga at the weekend, and all it's going to take is somebody on Twitter to go, Oh, why aren't the Ga players taking a the knee? They must support racism. And that's the way the world has gone now. Uh, any player that doesn't take the knee must be a racist, or anybody who doesn't want the team to take the knee must be a racist. And that's a very, that's a very limited attitude to have on it. It's a very narrow minded attitude to have on it because. Maybe some people just don't want to take uh, the knee. Now, the reason we're talking about this, and we're going to hear from the guy who want this, uh, wanted this brought up anyway, um, but it all comes from the news today that uh, all the Premier League clubs, so they're returning in, what, four weeks' time? Uh, they have all said, all the Premier League clubs have said that their players will continue to take the knee as a symbol of their unity against all forms of racism. I have my own thoughts on it. I'm sure you do uh, too, but... Um, I'm not surprised to hear that all the players will be taking the knee again when the season kicks off. Here's, here's my thing on it. If a player wants to take the knee, fair play. But I don't think it's doing anything for racism. Uh, Is it not? No. Is it not? And I'll tell you why. When you see the players take the knee... You instantly think about ra- racism. It brings you ra- oh, it's no, front no. and center. Someone who is racist, you're again, Adrian. You're living under a rock. Someone who is racist is not going to stop being racist because they see a player uh, for their favorite football team uh, taking the knee. Football players on their shirts 
for many, many years have been wearing bands that say no to racism. Has that stopped racism? Absolutely not. Look what happened in the final of the Euros uh, three weeks ago when uh, three black players for the English team uh, missed penalties. Racism all over Twitter. Did those... And by the way, anybody who tweets racism to uh, a black footballer is, is scum of the earth. Filth. Scumbags. Do you think that that stopped any of those people, that any of those people said, oh, I better not um, text um, any of these uh, black players racist comments because they took the knee. It has done absolutely nothing to get rid of racism. And I'll tell you why, because racists will always be racists. Okay, so players taking the knee and and highlighting, highlighting... Yeah. Exactly what you just talked about, the racist abuse those English players got after uh, Euro 2020 because someone missed a penalty or whatever. You're saying that uh, they should just forget about this taking a knee thing because they're achieving nothing. They are achieving nothing. And it's, I, I think it's, it's, you know what I mean, it's, it's all well and good and you feel good about that you're taking part in this, um, in this moral crusade against racism, but it is not going to stop Racism, it's not going to stop racists. Those scumbags that regularly tweet uh, racist comments and shout racist comments from the, uh, from the stands at football matches, they are not going to stop just because a couple of players took the knee. You're wasting your time. They're, my idea is, I'm, um, to, to tackle racism is, if someone, all those scumbags that did text um, uh, those black players uh, a couple of weeks ago, Put them into jail. Start arresting people for racism. But putting the knee down on the pitch isn't achieving anything. As Jeremy mentioned, uh, all of the Premier uh, League clubs have announced that as the new season is about to begin, that all the players will continue to take the knee at the start of Premier League matches. And it is a sign of a stance against uh, racism, a stance against the sort of shit that goes on at football matches, the sort of chants that go around football stadiums, the sort of abuse that goes online uh, against uh, black players and um, just it, general racism. It's kind of virtue signaling, isn't it? Is it, it though? It, it is. is it? Look at yeah. the b- the abuse, as you just but said what yourself. Are these, but what are these players... People do? like Marcus Rashford get online. It's just, yeah. it's intolerable. But the people who give them abuse should be behind bars, and they're not behind bars. It's virtual signaling because outside, after the players take the knee, yeah, what else are they doing to stop racism? Well, I don't know what they're doing in their well, own what private else, lives. What else are they doing after, t- after they take the knee? Do you think, okay, let me, here's what we'll do, because I'm determined to be proven right on this, okay? I want you to text yes or no to this simple question, okay? Here's the number, 85 825-2626. 085-825-2626. And here is the question, okay? I want you to listen to this carefully before you text yes or no. Do you believe that players taking the knee has done anything to stop racism? It's, an, inter- you- it's an interesting question, Thanks. yeah. That's why I came up with it, yeah. And if anybody is... And you obviously don't. Well, it hasn't. Look what happened during the Euros. And I, I, if anything, I think it's after making matters worse because it's so divisive. You saw certain... How is it divisive? Because it's to angering... To take the knee at a match and, and say, we are against racism. Racism has uh, racism no, no place need, in our sport. But it doesn't have any place. We don't need you to tell us that. Racism has no place in the world, in society. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. These people exist. Is it not to make the people who are racist just complete social oh, you're, outcasts? You're talking to your arse. You're talking to your arse. To make them complete no. social outcasts. Uh, oh. You know, how can you possibly be racist when these lads are taking the knee at all football matches? It's not going to stop them. Now, we did say that this conversation was sparked by one of our listeners called Aaron, who sent us in this message earlier on before we began the show. Lads, I was watching the news earlier and I saw that... The Premier League plans to continue taking the knee as a affront against racism. Do you think, lads, that politics should ever be in football? Thanks. Love the show, John. All right, uh, John. Thanks. Sorry, I thought his name was Aaron. John, thank you very much indeed. Uh, He's saying, do you think politics should ever have a place in uh, sport? This isn't politics. No, it's not political. This isn't political. It's not political at all. Um... 
you know what? I'm not saying that players shouldn't take the knee. I think if they want to, if they want to do whatever they want, if they want to dance around in little circles and um, to say that they're against racism, let them do that. I'm sure if there's a, say for instance, you take Man United, yeah, standing out on the pitch for the first match of the season, yeah, and there happens to be a player uh, on that pitch who doesn't agree with taking the knee for whatever reason. You shouldn't have to explain yourself. Yeah, he, he'd be a brave man. He ain't going to be left standing on the pitch. No, so he no, will no. Ta- He will take the knee. Now, Morris, you're on uh, Opinions Matter. How are you, Morris? I'm okay. Can you hear me okay now? I can hear you perfectly. Now, uh, Morris, what's right. your opinion on this whole taking the knee thing? Um, the Premiership uh, club saying this will continue for the uh, 21-22 season. What's your view on it? Yeah, I think they want to try and get the message, message across a bit more clearer. Like Jade, uh, Dame, um, sorry, Jeremy said at the start, the guy that started it all was Colin Kilpatrick, the American footballer. Now, he's unemployed. No, no club, no team in America or owner of a, of a football team will give him employment. He let his contract run out and now he's unemployed. Now there's a guy that's paying the ultimate price for standing up for what he believes in. You know, black people were being treated as second class citizens, if not dirt in America. So it's, it's expanded over into Europe. But I was really shocked by the European uh, Cup and the way black players were treated. I mm. saw matches in Eastern Europe where monkey sounds were made when yeah. black players got the ball. Yes, um, and, and some would argue that so, the more this taking the knee thing comes uh, goes on, the more it's goading the gobshites who, um, you know, uh, no, peddle that sort of racist them, bull. But you're, you're saying you're no. Them, no, you're telling them, if you, if you stop the knee taking, you're letting them win. We won. We build them so badly. We treated them so badly. We harassed them online badly. And we won. And then what, who won? White supremacy. Black people don't matter anymore. And they do. And George Floyd brought it to... Like, I don't think any of us, Adrian, in their lifetime thought we'd ever watch a, a black man being executed on the streets of America, live, in front of... No, of, of all absolutely not. No, right? it was like something exactly. that harked from the dark ages, yeah. Yeah, so you have to build on that. He can't be forgotten ever. There's lots of people came before him, Martin Luther King, etc. And But this man was publicly executed by an individual who swore to protect and serve his community. And he killed them on the streets of America. So people around the world caught this and said, this has to stop. Now, one of the things I don't like about America, nearly every second policeman in America is an ex-army man. And they've been in situations where they probably suffered PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes, a lot of them, yeah. Exactly. So if they're given guns, if they flip, there's going to be trouble. There's people dying. And he was the ultimate sacrifice. That was white supremacy. Now, I believe the policeman that killed him, him and George had previous history together. Did you hear about that? No. Yeah. Seemingly, the policeman walked in a nightclub and he used to sneak people in and pocket the money. And George walked there and he ratted him up to the owners and they sacked him. Oh, and right. that's how he no, got him back. Oh, right. There I, didn't, I yeah. hadn't heard that. But I think the players in, in England who are English born, like you want to see the racist stuff I've seen on Twitter. You had the 11 English players, right? And they had three X's over three players that were English-born whites. And I said, if England didn't have immigration, these A players wouldn't be playing for England. So that's how deep it goes. Okay, so let's go back to the conversation uh, about the fact that Premier League clubs are going to continue taking the knee, uh, the players, that is, uh, during the 21-22 season. Do you think, and this is the fundamental question that Jeremy's been asking, do you think it is making any difference? Do you think that it is highlighting the um, racism that exists not only in in English society, uh, in society in general? Uh, Is it achieving anything? I think you're highlighting the fact that racism in sport and entertainment has to stop. End the story. Because what's the point in you being a Liverpool supporter a Man U supporter or a Man City supporter or Arsenal and you're in there shouting every week for your club and then one of your players plays for your country he makes a mistake or he doesn't do what he's supposed to do and then all of a sudden you can open up with him he's fair game for everybody Mm. With the racial slurs, everything else, the whole lot. Okay, so now you, that's, you that's, think, that's, uh, bearing in mind what happened after the Euros, with the sort of abuse yes. that some of the players got, you think it is important to continue this taking the knee thing, to yeah. continue to push that. All right, stay, stay there. For, remind people. Yeah, that is just yeah. apparent. It's disgusting. Stay there for a second if you can, please. Let me have a listen to this WhatsApp voice note from Robbie. 
nothing will remove racism from football or other sports. These scumbags just, well, that's it. They're just scumbags, end of. No, and I, I agree with you, Robbie. However, don't we get to a stage in society, and I'm talking about all sorts of things. For example, 30 years ago, it was, it was cool to drink and drive, and everybody did it. And you went to the pub, and you had five pints, and you drove home, and everybody did it. But over the last uh, 20 or 30 years, it's become extraordinarily socially unacceptable now to drink and drive. Can't we make racism the same thing so that people get called out for it? So that if you are making racist comments, somebody will eventually say to you, ah, here, enough. You don't believe that, no? No, because these, um, these bottom feeders, yeah, these knuckle draggers are uh, racist. By the way... Some of the racists aren't all knuckle draggers as no, you described them. No, I know, I know, no. Some of them are businessmen. Yeah, correct. I, I get that, so I get that. And she look at her own country, the far right yeah. in her own yeah. country. is It's scary how many people uh, align themselves to the far right. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is they hang around in their own kind. You know what I mean? They're in their own groups. Um, you Okay, what I would say to you, Adrian, is you... Um, go into a housing estate somewhere in Dublin, I'm going to name just any housing estate somewhere in Dublin, where there's a group of lads, a group of young fellows who every night taunt black people living in their estate, and you tell them, you take the knee in front of them and tell them, now don't be racist. What no, they, they, they are knuckle draggers. They're yeah. not going to listen to me. But if they have respect for uh, certain players on certain teams, and they do, Here's the reality. Some of these racists sorry, uh, actually think, you know, uh, Marcus Rashford is the best footballer in the world, but they're still racist gobshites. I think taking the knee is making an important statement for those idiots that eventually it'll become socially acceptable to slag Marcus Rashford off just because he happens to be black. As I said, uh, in Premier League football for the last, I don't know how many years, as long as I uh, can remember, there have been big signs up around all the grounds and on the TV, say no to racism. This anti-racism thing did not start with the Black, with the black Lives Matter and taking No, the I'm aware of that. Say, but no, it's, it's say no to racism has been a slogan of sport. But it's become prominent in our part of the world over the last, since um, the uh, Floyd case last year. Louis Saha of Crystal Palace never took the knee today and all the rest of his team he did and he's coloured so I don't know why and I don't know why they're keeping that on I think it's ridiculous uh, let's have a listen to uh, what Kieran has to say on this uh, Kieran, what's your opinion well, lads, yeah just on that about the uh, taking the knee and stuff it does absolutely nothing for football it doesn't even do anything like they say oh we don't want to be involved in politics but yet yeah, this is a massive issue when it comes to footballers, it comes to, to supporters even. Um, racism always lives, racism is always going to be there. I myself have never come across it, but I do use social media a lot. And um, I do an awful lot of streaming and stuff like that uh, and gaming. And it's rife. It's huge in the gaming community, um, racist remarks, especially in games like Call of Duty. Now, they had a massive um, ban of over, I think it was 5,000 to, to 10,000 um, accounts with racist remarks alone. So you could imagine 10,000 people creating accounts after accounts just to uh, give abuse online. I don't think footballers showing respect towards one another or, you know, taking the knee is going to do anything when it's a lack of, it's a, just, just a lack of cop on the people online. That's it. Love the show. I'm glad you're back. All the best. Kieran. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Kieran. And, uh, and I get what you're saying, Kieran. But my point is that it, the longer these players continue uh, taking the knee, the more it will become socially unacceptable, unacceptable to be as blatantly racist as some of these Hang gobshites on, are. No, no, it's always. <sighs> I'm getting frustrated now because it's always been so, in my mind anyway, it's always been socially unacceptable uh, to be racist. Maybe I'm wrong. When has it ever been acceptable to be, to be racist? Uh, maybe back in Mississippi, back in the 1950s, it was acceptable. But racism, racism hasn't been acceptable for a long, long time. Yeah, maybe in your world. There are other circles 
the sort of idiots that abuse people like Rob. I heard a 21, two-year-old young fella in the city centre a couple of weeks ago look like a respectable enough uh, young fella. Yeah. 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 Uh, I was walking along past this whole group and he was in a, a bit of a confrontation with some, uh, some guy. Your man walked off and uh, the young fella, 21, 22, said, F off your N, the N word. Yeah. Now, I don't know what the confrontation was over, but the fact of the matter is it was a confrontation over over something, but he resorted to the uh, to, to the N-word. Um, let's bring John in on uh, this conversation. Hi, guys. Um, I'm going to say no on this one, and the simple reason being is I feel that it's going to make matters worse um, because the players will be down on their knees, um, as, as you said, and I believe like the, the whole stadium will probably... Uh, be racist towards them, even including the white the white players and stuff. So what I believe that the races that would be there, uh, I, I feel the lads would make make things worse and spark it off. If you get me, um, so I'm gonna have to disagree on it. Um, the whole knee thing, you know, whatever about using bands or whatever, but the whole kneel thing, I think it's just gonna make things a hell of a lot worse. Thanks. Has it made things a hell of a lot worse? I don't, I don't know if it has made things any worse. I think the fact is we're having this conversation we should be about this players conversation. feeling yeah, that yeah. they have to take a knee in order to make their point that racism in their sport and in society in general is just not acceptable okay, anymore. Do you think every single player in the in the Premier League wants to take the knee? Not necessarily, yeah. no. No, so I don't, no. Do you think they're being forced into it? Uh, yeah, I think and, they're... Uh, yeah, I do accept that they probably yeah. are. And do you also accept that there may be club bosses who don't agree with it either, but they're terrified? Can you imagine if uh, at the start of the next season and Spurs, for argument's sake, yeah? If the chairman of Spurs came out and said, uh, by the way, uh, Spurs won't be taking uh, the knee uh, this season. You know, it's it's a political uh, movement, uh, which I don't believe it is. It's not a political movement. It's human rights. Um, it's not political. Um, it's not as if they have Labour Party or Conservative Party on their shirts. You know what I mean? It's not political. It's a uh, human rights issue. But if the chairman of Spurs came out and said, starting this season, our team will not be taking the knee. We won't be engaging that at all. What, what do you think? No, they'll be murdered. Yeah, they would. That and that's obviously why the Premiership as a collective has have uh, come out and said we are going to do this uh, this year I don't th- I think that um, next year maybe they will decide uh, you know we've made our we've made our point on this uh, Debbie what is your opinion for Opinions Matter Hey lads I feel like this is a very sensitive topic for a lot of people um, I'm just sending a voice note to give you a little input about my story um, so at the start of the Black Lives Matter movement, I had posted something saying all lives matter because I agree that all lives matter, black, white, LGBT, trans, and a friend of colour, that was my friend, accused me of racism and not supporting the movement because I didn't categorically write all lives, black lives matter. So for somebody to say that you're racist, um, because you've said something like all lives matter it's just barbaric like clearly you're inclusive and you're not racist because you're saying that all lives matter um, so yeah I think it's a sensitive topic for a lot of people um, so yeah that's just my input Alright Debbie obviously it is a, uh, a sensitive matter for a lot of people and if you're on the receiving end of any type of racism it's a particularly sensitive matter for you and again um, on the back of Euro 2020 the sort of abuse vile uh, that uh, that some players uh, got here um, uh, and by the way you know, people seem to have this tendency to believe that it's only uh, in England that this sort of racism oh, happens. No, Need God. I remind you of the case of the young fella from down the country who uh, was convicted for harassing, what's his name? I can't remember his name. Ian Wright. Ian Wright, yeah. Well, need um, I remind you yeah. uh, of any time we put a topic up on our Facebook page, uh, the far right come out and there's a lot of people who are members of the far right. So let's not forget that as well. Oh. 
All right, let me bring uh, one final call in on this, and that's uh, you, Declan. You're on Opinions Matter. How are you? How are you doing, uh, Adrian and Jeremy? Um, no, I, I agree with uh, Jeremy that the, the footballer should have a choice to take the name or not. Mm, you um, see, uh, as Jeremy said, and I do agree with him, if, let's say, you would uh, you've 15 players on the pitch... And one out of all of the players or the two squads, and one player decides not to take the knee, yeah, he will be racist. absolutely ripped out of it. So that's well, okay. I think it was last year, last year, Wilfred Tahar. I don't know if you know, Jeremy probably knows. So he plays for Crystal Palace. And he came out, said that he will no longer take the knee. Now, I don't know if he has been taking the knee, uh, you know, after that, but he did come out and say, look, at, um, I mean, obviously, I'm black and I'm proud. Um, yeah, just because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dark skin, why, why should I take the knee? And, and he, 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 he has a, 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 his own, obviously his own opinion. Mm. Um, you know, like, like, I just can't believe, like, even when, when the England, the England lost the, the Euros, um, three, three black lads missed the penalty. Yeah. And they were ridiculed. And, and, I think, I think and, and it was terrible. disgraceful the way they were picked on. Disgrace. And, and it was like, disgraceful that race came into it. It's one thing being picked on. Yeah. You, you gobshite, you missed a the penalty. You're a player, yeah. 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 Look, yeah. look at Ireland um, and, and probably England. We're probably the most racist country in Europe, possibly the world. I think we you know. I, I, I do think uh, I, we definitely have a racist problem here in Ireland. We, we no, no, no doubt problem. at all. I do you think know, the racism problem in England is a little bit worse than it is in Ireland. Maybe not that much worse, but it is. It certainly, um, it's seen well, a lot more. I'm good friends uh, uh, with a couple of black lads. And I tell you one thing, they're, they're nearly as bad as the Irish. They're good crack, you know what I mean? And the, but when you when you see people like a white person playing with a black lad, they they ridicule you. And I, I'm like, are you serious? You know, no, and, and, I, and I, I have it, 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 I have seen and witnessed experience, uh, examples uh, of that. So, in answer to the question, do you think that the Black, black Lives Matter uh, or the taking of the knee has passed its sell-by date? No, I, I, I think it, yeah, I think it has passed on. Um, you know, like look at even um, the the oldest lads in Andorra when we took the knee and the, the, they didn't, and the, the whole. The whole, uh, I think it was in, in Andorra. And the whole Andorans built us because we took the knee because we obviously we have black players. Um, but I, I just think for a country, if, if, we're, if we're on the losing end of things and we have a black player, they're ridiculed. Like, look at Sir Christie in the, in the last World Cup campaign. Um, he was ridiculed. Ridiculed. Um, now, I, now, I know it's a different topic. James McLean is another person. I know that's, that's different. So it's, it's terrible when it comes to black players. Unfortunately, we're a multicultural country and we're going to have black lads coming to the other squad. Okay, but the, but the uh, answer to my question is you do believe that the uh, no, taking I don't, the I don't knee... Think, I don't think it, it's solved. Um, you know what I mean? It's, okay, it's, 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 past, it's, it's past its sell by yes. date. All right. 100%. All right. Thanks very much indeed uh, for your call. And thank you very much indeed, all of you, for your calls on... Opinions matter. Opinions matter. Opinions matter with Adrian Kennedy and Jeremy Dixon, a daily podcast from Ireland about opinions. Get ready to cheer on Team USA. Sign up for Xfinity Internet and get a Flex 4K streaming box free and Peacock Premium included. Can your internet do that? Restrictions apply. Not available in all areas. Peacock subscription required. Xfinity, proud partner of Team USA. In a rapidly changing world, people wonder more and more about where their food comes from and how it was grown. The farmers who grow America's corn understand how important this is and want to share the stories from our farms of how we are working to grow an incredible crop that can be an answer to sustainability questions and is grown by men and women who value the air, water, soil, and our natural resources just like you. To find out more about how corn farmers are working to feed and fuel a vibrant economy and healthy planet, visit NCGA.com. NCGA, a commitment to the future. 